In this lecture, I will provide a conceptual overview of k-fold cross-validation. So first I'll start with an overview of k-fold cross-validation, and then I'll get into the statistical assumptions, what statistical significance is considered in k-fold cross-validation, as well as effect size and practical significance considerations. So let's get started with a conceptual overview of k-fold cross-validation. So before we get into it, let's do a quick review of predictive analytics. So as a reminder, predictive analytics involves estimating training and sometimes validating a model in one or more data samples and then evaluating or testing how well the model performs in a separate data sample from the same population. So with just about any model, so for example, a linear model, linear regression model, we can make predictions. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're doing predictive analytics unless we take the next step and we take those predictions and we see how accurate they were. Okay, And the way that we can do this is by actually estimating the model or building the model based on one sample from a population and then taking what we find in terms of the model characteristics and applying it to a different sample from that population and then seeing how well that model predicts whatever it is we're trying to predict in that second sample and then we can see the prediction accuracy. Okay, So in other words, we have two phases here when we have predictive analytics. In phase one, we use our past data or the data we already have. We build our model and then as a result, we get our model fit and results from that model. Now in the second phase or phase two, we take new data from that same population that the original or past data come from and then we apply the model that we built in phase one to this new data and then we assess the prediction accuracy, where often our goal is to get the most um, accurate model in terms of predictions. So in terms of a conceptual overview of k-fold cross-validation, it is a specific type of predictive analytics model, and it involves the following steps. So the original data are first split randomly into k subsamples. So for example, k equals five would mean that you split the data into five subsamples and these become the training data. Now, this is where k-fold in terms of the letter k comes from. It's the number of subsamples. So if you did create five subsamples, then you could say five-fold cross-validation to be a little bit more specific. But just generically, we call this type of analysis k-fold cross-validation because you can really choose how many subsamples you choose to use. So the next thing that we do is that the models are going to be estimated using k minus one subsamples for each fold, okay? And so I'll provide a, a visual representation of this a little bit later on, so hopefully this will bring this to life a little bit more. Now with the kth subsample is going to serve as the validation sample for each one of these um, folds that we're testing. And then this process is going to repeat until every subsample has served as the validation data and the model results can then be averaged across the folds. Now, k-fold cross-validation can also be extended by splitting the original data into a subset that undergoes the k-fold cross-validation process that I just described and then, into, and then have the rest of the data split into another subset that is used for evaluating the final model's performance, such as prediction accuracy. And this final data subset is often called the test data. So again, we're using this language from traditional predictive analytics where we have our training data and we have our test data and often we'll also think in terms of our validation data. And in the process of k-fold validation that I'm about to present to you, we're gonna consider all three of those components, the training data, validation data, and the test data. Okay, and it's important to note that k-fold validation, or cross-validation rather, is a broad generic type of framework that we can use, and we can apply different types of models within this framework. So for example, we could use linear regression models or we could use log logistic regression models. It's really up to us, but we can use this and apply this k-fold cross-validation approach broadly. So let's do a conceptual and visual overview of k-fold cross-validation and in this overview, I hope to provide and elucidate the process that typically unfolds, or at least generically speaking, for k-fold cross-validation. So let's assume that we start with our data. Now, it's conventional that we would typically take 80% of that data and randomly assign it to what we call the training data, 
whereas the other 20% of the data will be the holdout data. Now, this decision to use 80% versus 20% for the training data and the, the test data respectively is fairly conventional, but you could do a 90-10 split, a 70-30 split, however you'd like to do it. So again, 20% is going to go to our test data, whereas 80% goes to our training data. The important part here too is that you do random assignment from the original data set to these different splits. So let's focus now on that training data. The training data is where we're going to actually apply the formal k-fold cross-validation process. Okay, and so from that training data, this is where we're going to randomly assign cases from that training data to various subsamples. And so this is where you decide how many subsamples that you would actually like to include. Here, um, I show five subsamples and then can show that you could extend that upward up to K subsamples. So this is again where the language around um, the K subsamples or the K folds come into play here. Okay, and so this is where you'd apply that K-fold cross-validation process, and I'll show you an example um, subsequently, and hopefully this will bring it to life a little bit more. But then from that K-fold cross-validation process, we're gonna train and build our models. So you might apply, let's say, linear regression here, um, ordinary least squares linear regression to be specific. You can train and build your model around this, and then you wanna evaluate that model. So how do you evaluate that model? Well, this is where we use the test data. And so we use the test data then as input into that model, and then we can assess the prediction accuracy based on this data that we didn't use to actually um, develop the model and train the model initially and to validate it. We're instead holding out this data, our test data for later, so that it essentially is untarnished and this, these data have not actually seen this model yet, okay? And so in this sense, we have more of a pure estimate and a better estimate of um, a, a, of how well our model is actually going to perform in terms of prediction accuracy, for example. So let's look at an example of k-fold cross-validation. So here's an example where, again, we start with data. We could say we have a thousand cases or something like that in our data set. And then we do our 80-20 random split. So if we have a thousand cases originally and we do an 80% split to the training data, then 800 cases go to the training data and 200 cases or 20% would go to the test data. And then let's say that we do K subsamples and specifically we're doing five subsamples here. Subsample one, two, three, four, and five. And these were randomly assigned from the original training data. Now we need to train and build the model. And so how do we do that with K-fold cross-validation? Well, here's the example. So in the first fold, so fold one, what we would do is we would actually test the model on the com combination of the samples one, two, three, four, which are highlighted or rather the background now is green. And then we'd validate on that fifth sample, okay? And then we repeat this process where we would use instead subsamples one, two, three, and five and then validate on subsample four for fold number two. And then for fold number three, we'd use subsamples one, two, four, and five, and then validate on the subsample three. For fold four, we would use subsample one, three, four, and five, and then validate on subsample two. And then finally for fold five, we would validate on the first sample, but it would be based on samples two, three, four, and five that we actually trained the model. Okay, and so this is the idea of running through these different folds. So you just saw four or rather five different folds, which are based on the different combinations of the five subsamples we have access to here. And this is a way of having essentially within the training data, holdout data or validation data that we can use at five different steps here. And these five different steps are folds. And then we can average the results or however we wanna do it across the different folds to come up with our final model that we've trained. Okay, and then, so here we have our final k-fold cross-validation trained model, and then we take that model and we want to evaluate that model. So how do we do that? This is where that holdout data or the test data that we did not use for training and validation come into play. And so again, we take that test data and this is input into the model that we trained, and then we get, our, we get the output from that model. Often we're interested in prediction accuracy in terms of how well that model actually performed. 
Okay, so what are the statistical assumptions of k-fold cross-validation? Well, it's a little bit misleading that I'm providing you with the assumptions of k-fold cross-validation because again, this is a generic framework and we can apply different types of models to this framework. So what I mean by that is that the assumptions will depend on what type of model is used for estimation in your k-fold cross-validation. So for example, if multiple linear regression is used, then statistical assumptions for multiple linear regression should be satisfied. As another example, if logistic regression is used, then statistical assumptions for logistic regression should be satisfied. Now, given that the data are split, sample size should be considered for every, uh, for every subset of data that you're using, okay? And they should be, the sample size should be considered when determining how many data subsamples are created. So if you have a really big sample, for example, let's say like 10,000 people or 10,000 cases more generally, then you might decide to do 10 folds or K equals 10. If you have a smaller sample, let's say you only have maybe 500 cases, then you might use K equals five or five folds for your, your K fold cross validation process. But you do wanna consider what the sample sizes are going to be and what's appropriate. And part of this will con uh, be contingent upon how many predictor variables and variables that you're, and relationships and associations you're actually specifying in whatever type of modeling you're applying to the K fold cross validation. So in terms of statistical significance, Again, this is really going to depend on what type of modeling you're applying to k-fold cross-validation framework, okay? So if you're using uh, traditional null hypothesis significance testing to evaluate statistical significance, then conventional statistical significance cutoffs and thresholds um, should be used. So if you're going to be using conventional thresholds, then maybe use p is less than 0.05 to indicate statistical significance for whatever parameter you're estimate, estimating. Now, the focus of any statistical significance testing is typically going to depend on the overarching purpose of the analysis and the type of the model. So for example, logistic re regression as a specific type of model um, that you're gonna be using for estimation purposes for k-fold cross-validation. And the reason I mention this is that sometimes we might be not necessarily so interested in the specific, in the level of statistical significance of the various um, predictor variables that might be in a model if we're trying to predict a certain outcome such as whether or not people stay or quit an organization, so voluntary turnover being the outcome, if we were using perhaps a logistic regression frame, um, estimate for estimation purpose, purposes. And we would be not necessarily interested in specifically which predictors um, are statistically significant, but perhaps, perhaps more so in overall model fit. So how well did that model fit the, da the data? And so this is where a classification table might come into play and we might consider um, uh, essentially how accurate our classifications were for each one of those uh, logistic regression models that we estimated. Now, in terms of effect size and practical significance, again, this is also going to de depend on what type of model we're using to estimate um, whatever it is we're trying to estimate that we're going to apply within the k-fold cross-validation framework. And so at the predictor variable level, we can evaluate the absolute and relative sizes of specific effects, for example. And we can also take into consideration potential multi-collinearity between the different predictor variables, as well as traditional statistical control, um, depending on what type of modeling we're applying. Now at the model level, we are often interested in prediction or classification accuracy. And so this is where um, something that's called a confusion matrix can sometimes come into play. And so this is really gonna depend upon the type of model though, as well as traditional indicators of model fit for that particular type of model. So if we're using linear regression, R squared or the proportion of variance explained in an outcome is often a uh, traditional indicator of model fit that we're interested in. Um, but it need not be R squared. It could be any other indicator of model fit as or classification accuracy um, or in general prediction accuracy that we're interested in. Okay, and so those tend to be more model level characteristics that we might consider in terms of how big or how well did our model actually predict what we were trying to predict. Okay, so just to give a quick sum up of what we talked about here with k-fold cross-validation. Uh, first, I gave you an overview, conceptual overview of what k-fold cross-validation actually is. And then we talked kind of broadly about what statistical assumptions you might consider when running k-fold cross-validation, as well as statistical significance, effect size, and practical significance.
The important thing to take away from this is that k-fold cross-validation is again a broad framework that we can apply within it, different types of modeling uh, techniques, estimation techniques, and so forth. And the idea is that hopefully we can get a better idea of how well our model is actually performing or could perform in terms of uh, prediction accuracy or anything like that. So this wraps up the lecture on k-fold cross-validation.